Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Sinister. So, if you have not caught the previous uploads about Julius Jones and John Marion Grant, you should definitely go watch those. They're super important. Julius Jones needs a lot of eyes on it, and so does John Grant, honestly. It's such a sad case with that one. Um, In that one, I do go into more of the death penalty in Oklahoma, so definitely check those out. Uh, Before we get started, in the comment section, I do have um, linked is a case suggestions form. So if there's anything, any cases that you know that really need eyes on it, you can tell me about it below. And I also have all the sources that I use for this video linked down below. I don't know if this is because media coverage just doesn't like covering people because they're not white, which we already know. Or if there's just genuinely not a lot of information on this case. I had a lot of, I had a hard time finding any information on this case. So this is definitely going to be a shorter video um, about the same length as John Grant, if not shorter. So I apologize. I wish there was so much more on this case. I also wasn't really able to find much out about Lauren Cho herself. I really wanted to, but from... Just hearing what her friends had to say through social media. Um, she seemed like an amazing person and definitely was taken way too soon. And this one it was definitely overshadowed by the Gabby Petito case because they they happened they both happened around the same time. Um, but when the Gabby Petito case came out, that was all anyone was talking about. And I don't want to take away from Gabby's case, it's just she wasn't the only one and We could have found Lauren, I feel like, so, but we're going to get into it, so I'm going to start this off. So check those links down below, and let's go ahead and get into it. So Lauren Cho, who is nicknamed Elle, moved to California from New Jersey in the fall of 2020 to pursue a new life unrelated to her teaching job on the East Coast. She was a 30-year-old Korean-American woman from New Jersey who was traveling with friends and her ex-boyfriend in Joshua Tree National Park in California. On a Find Lauren Cho Facebook page run by her family to help with the search, Her loved ones describe Lauren, who goes by Elle, as a talented musician, an incredible baker, a hilarious and loyal friend, a strangely intuitive intuitive gift giver, and probably the coolest sister one could hope for. And that, there's just something about that statement that just makes you wish she was still here. Like, she just sounds like the coolest person ever, and this case is just so sad. So, she went missing... After she left her Airbnb rental in Morongo Valley, California in June 2021. According to Cody Oral, Orel, Oral, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, her ex boyfriend and the last person to allegedly have seen her, she wanted to, quote, taste freedom, joining him on his tour bus as he made his way out west. Their journey led them to Bombay Beach, a small town on the coast. She was in the process of renovating an old school bus into a food truck when she went missing. So, just hearing the descriptions of her, she sounds like such a lovely and lively person, just wanting to live her life, and it's so sad that she didn't really get to go that far in it. Like, she was so incredibly young that her life was really just really beginning, and she just wanted to taste freedom, and it's so sad how it ended for her. Um, but I'm never going to get into when she goes missing. So Lauren's friends told police their last sighting of her was June 28th when she left the home where they were staying and went into the desert with no food, water, or a phone, which to me is just super weird unless she knows that she's going to be back really quick or she knows where she's going and doesn't need it and just didn't think to grab anything. That's what I thought and she just, she, when I hear that, I think she intended to come back because I don't know about you, even if I know that I'm probably going to be okay, I still grab stuff. Um, probably more than I should. And so, to me, it just sounds like she intended to come back. Um, at the time, Lauren was on foot and wearing a yellow t-shirt with denim shorts. Her ex-boyfriend, Cody Oral, is the last known person to have seen her. He told authorities they were together until he briefly went inside the bus they'd used to travel across the country. When he exited, Lauren was gone. He says, quote, there was a 10-minute window there and she evaporated. When I was reading this, I don't know. I kind of feel suspicious of him. I'm not going to lie. Because how do you not know that they're not going anywhere? Like, they haven't said anything. They just up and left. 
I mean, unless she really was going to be right back, but they're in the middle of the desert, so that's kind of weird. And even if there was a 10 minute window, it's just weird to think that somebody just vanished quite literally without a trace. Um, but obviously, this is just alleged in my opinion. That's what I felt when reading that. So, Oral called the police at 5.15 p.m. on the Monday that Lauren went missing. He later told the High Desert Star that he suspects she may have gotten into a vehicle with someone, possibly a person she'd previously been in contact with. He says, quote, On Sunday, she was going out to meet someone and wasn't saying who. I didn't pry into it then, but of course, now I wish. And that could have that could totally explain why she just kind of vanished without a trace and you didn't see her anywhere. Um... Maybe it was someone that she knew. That actually makes a lot of sense. And I, I just wish that she would have said who she's going to go meet with. Um, and why she wouldn't tell him. I mean, like, that's her ex-boyfriend, so maybe she just didn't want to. Like, she doesn't owe him that information by any means. It's just not, like, kind of wish you... You're like, yeah, I wish you would have pried because then maybe we would have answers. We would have someone to question. Um, because the way this ends, it's it ends with no answers. So, <clears throat> after reporting Lowe's, di- Lowe's, I'm sorry, Lauren Cho's disappearance to authorities, Cody Oral and his friends set out to look for her in the surrounding area. They found no evidence of her, and when law enforcement joined the search later, the only tracks they spotted were at that were that of the search party. And seeing that, that kind of was like, okay, yeah, maybe she got into a car with someone. That's why there's no tracks or evidence of her. But at the same time, I kind of feel like that could have been covered up by, I'm not saying anything, I'm just, that's how I feel. But, almost a month later, police conducted an aerial search on July 24th. I don't know why that took so freaking long to do, because with the Gabby Padilla case, they were on that so fast. They were doing searches day in, day out, as as much as they possibly could, so I don't understand why it took so long for them to do this. Um, but they searched the property where the group was staying a few days later. The San Bernard- Bernardino, Bernardino, I cannot pronounce anything, I'm so sorry. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department told NBC their search had been ongoing since Cho was first reported missing. But the Sheriff's Specialized Investigations Division became involved after local police, quote, exhausted their investigation. I'm not quite sure what that means. I don't know if it means like they used everything they possibly could. I don't know. Maybe it would be different if she was a white woman. That's all I'm saying. So, there are seemingly no traces of Lauren in or around the valley that she was last seen in, and this left authorities to believe she might have hitchhiked or caught a ride with someone in the area. Um, Search and rescue teams led by including drones, helicopters, dogs, and people on foot have been actively searching the surrounding areas of Binmar Trail for any sign of Lauren. The Morongo Basin Sheriff's Office and the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Specialized Investigations Division are leading the ongoing, in- were, they were leading the ongoing investigation. I don't know if they still are now, now that it went from a missing person to her, to them finding her remains. Reports show the police have, have access to Lauren's phone, computer, and her car. Now we are going to talk about them finding her remains so she did not get to come home alive and that is so heartbreaking so on thursday october the 28th human remains were found in the yucca valley desert earlier that month (laughs) and they were identified as lauren the human remains were found on october 9th in the rugged open desert terrain and this was found at they were found near her last known location, an artist-oriented Airbnb rental in Yucca Valley, about 30 miles north of Palm Springs. The county's coroner division transported the remains for identification and announced they were Lauren Cho's um, that following Thursday. The cause of death had yet to be released, and the department said pending a toxicology test. I tried to find so hard if anything about that came out yet, and I couldn't find anything, so I don't know if they have answers and they're just not saying, or if they just haven't had answers or anything. I'm not sure. I couldn't find anything, which I, again, find really weird because 
they had everything they needed on Gabby pretty quickly. That I know I keep bringing up Gabby's case, but it's like, come on, guys. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing something, but I could not find anything, like, anything, like, any of the rules that had to do with her toxicology test. So, up next, we're going to be talking about missing a white woman syndrome and how it relates not only to Lauren Cho's case, but every other case that's involving someone who isn't white. <clears throat> So if you don't know what this is, or you kind of know but you're not sure, this little tidbit will hopefully help you. Um, so the confirmation of Lauren Jones' death comes after the disappearance and death of and death of Gabby Petito, and we all know that Gabby Petito's case just captured the nation's attention i'll i'll be honest it captured mine because it's just so mind-blowing to watch things like this happen in real time but i also just i never saw any other cases on the tv so you know and hers was not the only one going on as we know so gabby was a 22 year old travel vlogger who died by strangulation she was killed in an estimated three to four weeks before her body was found. Um, and officials say that thousands of other people need the same level of attention that Gabby's death garnered. Which, yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people actually think that. But it's like the media only wants to report on the missing white woman. Um... Many pointed to a trend known as missing a white woman syndrome and noted that missing people of color often do not receive, receive the same public attention. And it's kind of like, you know, the pretty blonde white woman. Everybody is interested in knowing what happened to her, wants to find her, but nobody could give two shits about this black person that went missing or this korean woman that went missing like they just don't get the same attention basically and if like oh yes they do lauren cho's disappearance not and not just her but because we're talking about lauren cho, lauren cho her case happened around the same time as gabby's and do you remember even hearing about lauren's i only heard about lauren through twitter and it was well after she had went missing well after she had went missing and I can't believe I've never heard of it before because I I I consume true crime all the time and I just never heard of it. And it's because it was never played by media. So if you think, oh, they get the same attention, they they don't. Not even close. It would be nice if they did, but they don't. But continuing on, sorry, I had to I had to go off for a little bit, but the flurry of interest also has also renewed discussions of missing white woman syndrome, which describes mainstream media's perceived fascination with white men who are who are missing or in danger, um, compared to their perceived disinterest in covering people of color in similar situations. So, this is a quote from Joy Reid, um, and she says, It goes without saying that no family should ever, should have to ever endure that type of pain. Um, and goes on to say, And the Petito family certainly deserves answers and justice. But at the same time, more than 400 indigenous, indigenous women have gone missing over the past decade in Wyoming, which is where um, Gabby had died. She had also died in Wyoming. And the state isn't making a fuss about it. And none of these cases of missing indigenous women have even rose to... The, the levels of attention that Gabby has gotten. And like, oh, I can bet you that almost, if you say the name Gabby Petito, just about everybody knows who she is. Even if they're not into true crime, you just know who she is. But I bet nobody has heard of the 400, 400 plus indigenous women that went missing, you know? So that is all I really had for you for Lauren Cho. Like I said, I just did not have a lot of information for her by any means. And I wish there had been just more. And maybe there's just some things that the officials aren't saying or they don't care to release. Because as far as I know or that I've heard, 
they don't know who has done this to her. They are, I don't know if they're even still investigating what happened to her. I would hope so. But we just don't have any answers and nothing to go off of. And I just, all we can really do is hope is that they continue to search for her and that answers are found and that the person person or persons that's done this is brought to justice and that her family and friends get the closure that they need and they want. Um, it just breaks my heart because Lauren should definitely still be here. Just, I can, I'm sure you can tell by the pictures that I've put up um, on the screen that she just looks happy and vibrant and full of life. And to think that that light was just stamped out, it's just so sad. And how close she was found to where she went missing. It's like she was there. I just feel like she could have found fa she could have been found faster. I honestly don't think the authorities um, did enough for her by any means. I don't think the media did much for her at all. Like there's very few articles on her, and it's just heartbreaking because she deserves the same attention that Gabby got and that all these other white women got. Like Lauren Cho is just as unimportant. And she deserves so much more. But I hope that talking about her, if you've never heard this case, you'll look into it and spread the information around. And hopefully that will be a push that will keep the authorities going and to care enough to find out what happened. And maybe this case will be solved. Um, yeah, she just, she just her and so many of so many other people of color deserved better in their cases so i just hope that this sheds some light on the situation and if you didn't know what missing white women syndrome was hopefully you kind of understand what it is now um it's crazy if you don't know what it is but hopefully you know what it is now and hopefully we can all make a conscious effort to just care about everyone who goes missing regardless of what color they are and hold people of color that go missing and just as much of importance as a white woman or a white man that goes missing so so many people are missing and we need to bring them home and that is what I wanted this is what I want to end off with so but that is Lauren Cho who vanished into the desert without a trace and her remains were found almost just so close to where she went missing so the links for the cases for the case will be down below so will there be the link for the case suggestion for case suggestions form if there's anyone else in your area that you think needs more light definitely check out that link um i have questions for you to fill out there's not that many um just some information that i need to go off of to help me understand the case a little bit better but that's gonna be all for me today all for me today guys thank you for taking the time to listen to lauren's story and i will see you next week next week will be about um a murdered indig indigenous woman from canada named alberta williams and that one is heartbreaking as well so i will see you guys next week and thank you so much for listening to her story bye guys mm -hmm.